tech enthusiasts, welcome back. Last time, we talked about how data can zoom through cables with extenders, but power, not so much. So today, we're tackling the burning question. What happens to power in PoE and why should you care? So let's dive in. So check this out. We've rigged a 300 meters cable way longer than usual to a PoE setup. And on the PSE, that's the power source, our PoE switch, our multimeter reads 53.7 volts. But at the PD, the device getting the power, that's the PDZ camera. Let's see. Let's see how much it'll get. 48.3, whoa, that's 5.4 volts loss. And that's voltage drop in action. So voltage drop is like a tax your power pays traveling through the cable. Longer cable means more resistance equals bigger tax. And if voltage drops too low, your device may just not work. Scary, right? So you can think of electricity like water in a hose. A short hose, full pressure. And a long hose, fraction slows the flow. And same with electrons. Long cables resist flow, dropping voltage. And if you need a fire hose of power, maybe to a PDZ camera, that means more currents equals even more drop. So there are two culprits. One is distance. The longer the cable, the bigger the drop. And two, power hunger. High wattage devices like PDZ cameras or Wi-Fi 6 SS point suck more juice and worsening the drop. And combine both, recipe for disaster. And when should you care? When you're using power hungry gear like PDZ cameras or stretching cables beyond few hundred meters. And the pro tip is, you can use PoE Plus or PoE Plus Plus for heavy lifts. You can always add a high power PoE injector to boost power mid cable. So remember, data can go the distance with the standards, but power's on a tight leash. So plan your setup wisely, mind the voltage drop, and keep those devices humming. And next video, we will decode PoE standards and talk about how to calculate your PoE power budget. So stay charged, and I'll see you in our next one.